Swedish House Mafia dropped their, <laughs> this is insane to say, debut album uh, <laughs> in 2022, a, a group that has been together for, I think, 15 years now, <laughs> at least. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, so it's, yeah, obviously they weren't making albums together, but mixing songs, um, starting to make music together. And one of the, one of the, the like seminal house EDM acts, you know, I think there's an argument in the early 2010s that they might have been like the mm. like most prominent act. And you think about that, like closing tour that they had in 2013 when they were at MSG and it really felt like one of those, uh, like final moments of a group, you know, that could have been more and they just called it off too early. And uh, then they come back in 2019 with a reunion <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. So they're not really done. There's too much money for, for them to really leave this off the table. Their solo careers were successful, but I think obviously not reaching the highs of the, them together as a group. And now releasing Paradise again, again, debut album. I mean, Dave, what did you think of this listening to it? Did, were you enjoying yourself? This definitely exceeded my expectations. Paradise again. I just didn't have a lot of hype for a Swedish house mafia comeback, <laughs> despite, as you said, them having a short but prolific run at the top of EDM during the peak of EDM in mainstream music culture, which was the, you know, uh, early to mid 2010s. The bit, this group only existed as a DJ super group, you know, Axwell, Steve Angelo, and Sebastian Ingrosso. The three of them were actually only officially this group from 2008 to 2013, and then the hiatus happened. So they've actually been on hiatus longer than they were actually active as a group at this point. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I, I remember, you know, that time, of course, they had those two yeah. single albums, those two compilation albums, until one, until now, 2010, 2012. I like the song with Pharrell, but of course everyone remembers Don't You Worry Child. Yeah. Three times platinum. Really big song. One of the biggest house songs of that era. You know, and I think their music in general, the reason I wasn't super hyped for this comeback is because when I think of that music, it just kind of reminds me of that time, like like Avicii does as well, where mm-hmm. it's just a dated style of music for me as someone who's not like a big progressive house, not a big deep house fan, you know? So still morbid curiosity to see like what why are they coming back what kind of music are they going to make because edm is much more different scene now than it is when they went on hiatus and they're coming back in earnest because they went from polydor records to republic records so now they're a universal music group act so i think they're going to be around a long time if that uh label switches any indication but yeah i was uh pleasantly surprised with how many songs i actually were was digging yeah, you know, I I had similar feelings. I wasn't going into this with super high expectations that this record was going to blow me away, but I kind of expected we would get some, you know, some moments. Uh, you know, we we had already heard a few of the singles, "Moth to a Flame" and "Red Light." Um, I think there was might be one other one, but you know, so you kind of got a sense of where they were going with it. And I think I think one of my fears in making an album uh, was that you know, especially with Moths of the Flame being one of the singles is that it was going to be a lot of like high level guests kind of coming onto each song. And that, that can sometimes feel a little cheap and almost kind of like, is this really like the group showing off or are they kind of just getting like, like the weekend to come in and really like blow their album out. Uh, and I think we got a good mix of it. I think there's some high profile features, but really the second half of this album is all just them mixing and, and doing house stuff you know and i i think there's quite a few songs on here that i thought were pretty eclectic and um really enjoyed some of the features a lot but also really enjoyed some of the songs that didn't have features too so i was uh i was pleasantly surprised by this what did you uh what like stood out to you on first listen yeah like i said just the number of songs that uh i i took away uh from and actually feel like we're really interesting because i think a lot of times with house music as someone who's not like a hardcore house fan is like those loops the the repetition that kind of factors into a lot of like house instrumentals can kind of like lull you into complacency you know and you know if you're at the show or you know you're you're rolling whatever it is it's kind of what you want but like it's not for everyone it's not usually for me 
Uh, but I, I was surprised with like how like inventive some of the production was. Like I think a song early on, uh, just an instrumental track, Mafia, the track Mafia, that dude, that was like the energy of that song felt like it should have been in like a blood soaked a rain soaked bloody brawl in some sci-fi movie or something like yeah. there were just a lot of like cool moments on this record overall and yeah i was happy to hear that i i think that that stretch where you get moth to a flame which is you know i think an absolute banger abel sounds great on that track but then you get moth uh moth to a flame mafia frankenstein and don't go mad all in a row and you're just like Whew. and then uh, two tracks later because paradise again the title track is kind of a whatever track to me but lifetime with ty dollar sign 070 shake also a standout to me i was like oh this is a great middle run and then it gets to the second half of the album where you when you get red light uh for you um i think even it gets better i thought was pretty good so there's a there's quite a few on here i really was like oh that's great but yeah mafia i think was the clear standout for me i it felt like a track that we're gonna hear so many like remixes to you know in Mm -hmm. terms of not only edm remixes but like rappers like going over it in like a mixtape or something like that it just feels prime yeah. to be used over and over sure 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 yeah i mean red light i hadn't heard it as a single but really expert use of obviously sting's performance on roxanne, roxanne. the police classic that was a really interesting way and the, the, the production on that song isn't like fading away just so they can showcase mm-hmm. sting i think it really complements it well uh yeah and like that run you referenced frankenstein with rocky I mean, Jesus Christ, like, I haven't heard an ASAP Rocky feature that goes that hard in a while. Like, I'm a big fan of, like, rap trap remixes. Obviously, Sweet Shots Mafia doesn't make trap, but th- I, this sounded so good. This is, like, just a mosh pit banger. But Rocky does so many different flows on this song. And then the beat switches up a few times from Sweet Shots Mafia, too. Like, I think that's just a complete, complete banger. And then uh, right after that, Don't Go Mad that has a really awesome progression, really awesome build that you kind of associate with like pump up uh, electronic songs. You know, it's funny. I don't, I don't love moth to a flame. It's been getting a lot of acclaim, but I can't help but think of the weekend's other EDM songs he's done. Like uh, obviously the bunch he did with Daft Punk on Starboy, as well as even his single with Gus Affelstein, lost in the fire. Mm. Like, I think I just like all those songs more. So I was like, ah, oh, this is, this is all right. But I like the other ones more. Yeah. No, I agree. I think there, he has better ones, but I still thought that was pretty good. Um, yeah, I want to just jump to Lifetime real quick. I, what a great look for 070. You know, mm. a, an artist I think we both believe in and think has a promising career ahead of them. And um, I was really pumped to hear her on this. And whenever she jumps in, I thought it was great. Tied dollar sign, I was a little bit like, eh, not as interested in on it. But right. um, I, and there were points in, in the track that I, I thought were bit more boring especially like in the middle when things kind of drop out but when that beat comes in and 070 is just singing over it it's it's really really great um yeah any other songs that stood out to you i also like uh, time i thought the tempo with like the horn production was really appealing on that one um but yeah this was uh definitely better than i expected and um you know i didn't talk about edm too much i know we got a flume album coming out that i'm excited for but uh, yeah, definitely interesting to have a house album that I think is trying to be a bit more than just a traditional house album. So, you know, in, in preparing for this, I didn't realize that Switch House Mafia was the first EDM act to headline MSG, Madison Square Garden. I would have thought for sure Daft Punk would have had that distinction, but that's not the case. Yeah, they just didn't tour, right? They just Exactly. Like, they could have done yeah, they definitely could have. And Avicii, I'm surprised, wasn't, but maybe maybe he was like right at the same time as them. But yeah, that is that is kind of crazy. Um, I got to say, definitely uh, pleasantly surprised by this. I think it's uh, it's nice to have them back. And I think it'll be nice to kind of hear them working with uh, some, some of these upcoming artists uh, for sure. So we'll be adding one of their songs to our Nostalgia Best of 2022. 